All right, so for problem 76, we have this piecewise function and we want to find the value of k so that it'll be continuous when x is 1. So essentially, um, you want to basically think of this as this graph connecting to this graph. So this graph is what it is up to 1. And this is what the graph is after one. So at one, you want them to be the same because then they're going to have the same y value and then they're going to connect. So um, let's set each of these first equal to each other. So we'll go negative 2x squared minus 7 equals negative x squared minus 2kx. And then we're talking about x equals 1, so let's plug in 1 for x. So we'll just get negative 2 there, because negative 2 times 1 squared is just negative 2. Negative 2 minus 7 is negative. This will be just negative 1. Plug in 1 in there, you'll just get negative 2. We'll get my, well, minus 2k. Simplifying, negative 9 on the left. Adding this 1, you'll get negative 8 is equal to negative 2k. And then k will just be equal to 4. And so your answer is c. All right, problem 77. We have this particle with this velocity function. And let's move it along the x-axis with this equation. V of t equal to e to the t squared power minus 2. And we want to find the total distance traveled by the particle during this time interval. So um, when you integrate velocity, you're going to get the position function. If it was just like this, you know, you know, you have a constant. But just, just, just remember, going from... The integral of velocity gets you to the position function because when you take the derivative of the position, you'll get the velocity. So we just have to integrate this. You just have to integrate the, this velocity function. So we just have to integrate v of t from 0 to 2. And that'll give us the displacement. If we just have it like this, that'll give us the displacement. Because with integrals, they could um, offset each other with positive and negative values, like areas above or areas below the x-axis. So what we want to do is take the absolute value of v of t when we integrate. That way, it makes everything positive. Then you'll get the total distance. So and I did it earlier in my calculator, but let me, let me, let me go through it again on here. Um, it's kind of bright, the lighting. Let me turn it. See if you guys can see that. Hard to see, but let me try it again. Let's see here. Calculus. Numerical interval. So we're going from zero to two. Depending on what calculator you have, you know, it's gonna be a little different on how you go about oops, how you go about you know, using using your calculator, I guess. But we essentially just want to enter, put this in um, absolute value symbols. So we have e to the x squared power Minus two, whoops. I'm struggling. Let me check something right now. There we, there, there we go. Um, it's, you can see that it'll be 13.6378. Um, so just again, make sure you integrate the absolute value of that integral, that's a little better. Sorry about the lighting. I didn't think it'd be, it would be glaring like that. So the answer, anyways, the answer would be B.
All right, problem 78. We have um, f being the continuous function, so that its integral from two to five is negative four, and that its integral from eight to five is three, and we want to find the integral from eight to two. So the trick here is just to understand the properties because um, you see how they're, they're messing up with the order. So um, we want to just basically add these two, but add it so that it's going from two to five and then five to eight. So essentially you want to you know, have this going on. Plus the integral from five to eight. Now this first one is, is given to us right here. So we have negative four plus, now if, if eight to five is three, the property is that when you switch the endpoints, it becomes the opposite of three. So it's negative three. So we have negative four plus negative three. So then we get negative seven. Now this gives us the integral from two to eight. But this, but we're looking for the integral from eight to two. So this will be the opposite of this value. So think of it like this. This will be negative one times integral from two to eight of f of x dx. That's just the property that they're looking to see if you can apply. So then this is negative seven times negative one. And so it's just positive seven. And so the answer becomes D. It's 79, let f be a twice differentiable function such that it's defined, oh, well, let f be a twice differentiable function defined by the differentiable function g so that it, f of x is equal to this integral. Now we're given some information about g where it's concave up, decreasing and positive for all real numbers. So which of these could be false about f of x? So let's first break down what this tells us about g. If it's concave up, that tells you that the second derivative of g is positive. If it's decreasing, that tells you that the first derivative of g is negative. And if it's saying that the g of x is positive, that's just telling you that g of x is greater than zero. Now let's try to match this up with how f of x corresponds because f of x is this integral, but we want to look at the concavity and how it's in, if it's increasing or decreasing, essentially. So if f is this, that means f prime of x, that just basically undoes this integration. So f prime of x is g of x. So that means that f prime of x is greater than zero. And then f double prime of x is just g prime of x. And we're given that g prime of x is negative. So then this is just less than zero. So then we just now go from here. Like, so f prime of x is greater than zero. So that's, it is increasing, so that's true. f double prime of x is negative. So it is concave down, so that's true. C, we have f of x is negative for all x. So this is kind of essentially saying that um, like it has to be negative, but like, or it's saying that it has, it will always be negative, but we're told that this original integral um, is always, well, it, we're told it's always, you know, calling it always concave up, decreasing and positive. Um, so when you just, when you just um, think about this, if you were actually to draw this, it would have to be above the um, x-axis and it would always have to be positive. This is what G would look like. Maybe I'm not saying it looks exactly like that, but that's the kind of idea. It's decreasing, it's concave up, and that's it's it's um positive. And remember the integral of f or f is defined as the integral or the area below or between x and g. So this this, this can't be negative. It's impossible. Like it's it wouldn't make any sense. 
So the answer would be C.